Hello, people. Today we're going to talk about military bayonets. These are super cool. One thing I did when I was little was buy old stuff like this at garage sales, which was extremely plentiful. And uh, you probably don't see stuff like this today at garage sales, but um, back in the 80s, when I was growing up, let's see if we can get a bottom picture of the bottom of this. Stuff like this was real common. Now, I actually just found this at a pawn shop. It's a USM4 Camillus military bayonet meant to fit on the on the uh, the end of a rifle the, the muzzle end of the rifle would go out here and the, the bayonet lug would lock into this and uh, this is a classic and I got this really cheap and I didn't do anything to it I didn't clean it it could easily be restored uh, but there's something in the collecting world called patina, patina, and old items like this that saw war, uh, that did something that, you know, an average item doesn't go through. Um, it picks up character and patina, and... Um, so sometimes by restoring this, or even by simply cleaning it, you destroy that character, uh, devaluing it for some, maybe increasing the value of it for others, but uh, many people like to see this history before it's cleaned away. And if this grip could only talk... It's trying to talk. It's saying J.H. That's probably the original owner of this bayonet back in Vietnam, most likely. I think this is a 1960s M1 bayonet. But uh, just in great shape. Uh, the pawn shop owner is a friend of mine. And uh, it came in from an old man who was cleaning out his basement. And this was just... In his opinion, junk from his basement. Well, if you've ever heard the term, one man's junk is another man's treasure, uh, this is certainly it. Uh, the pawn shop owner sold me this knife for uh, $10, or less than $10, because I got all three of these items for 20 bucks. Just... Uh, really really beautiful and this was just a couple days ago so deals like this are still available you know you can still find them but you gotta go to different places now you can't just go to garage sales anymore oh here this marking here will tell the tale for a collector where where you find this fireball and the markings on the bottom of this grip uh, will will say it all to the collector who is um, you know very advanced in collecting this particular model of bayonet and there's people out there that do that and what we're going to try to do is capitalize on that and sell this bayonet and these other three items and try to maximize our profit. And this is another thing I did when I was really little. Uh, when eBay first came out, I started buying this stuff at garage sales and re, you know, posting it on the internet and selling it and making money um, off of a product like this is a lot of it is about explaining the history. People want to know the history. So if you're going to sell something, especially something that has history, you should be able to talk about it without 
just posting it and saying what it is. This is a, a bayonet, another bayonet for an M1 carbine. I'm sorry, an M1 Garand, rather. This is the M1 carbine, and this was the M1 Garand. Why the military decided to create two models with the same model nomenclature, M1, um, I don't know, a lot of people have asked that question for years, but um, these are two completely different firearms, uh, rifles that were used. Uh, this was used during uh, World War II, and this is a a bayonet made at some point. Now, I'm not a bayonet collector. I know enough about bayonets to tell you which model gun this went on, but what these markings mean and what year it was manufactured, um, I kind of fall short in that department. And quite honestly, I really don't care. I want this item to go to, um, you know, first I want to make a little bit of money off of it because I found it cheap and, uh, you know, that's kind of the game here. Um, but more importantly, I want it to go to someone who knows what it is and is going to appreciate the historical value of this bayonet. And then this, I'm not sure exactly what it is. It could be Swiss or German, but it's a bayonet for uh, a World War II or post-World War II military bayonet. And this was available somewhere for $3.99 probably 20 years ago in some surplus store. But again, to the collector who knows what this is, um, you know, it could be worth a lot more money, but I don't know what it is, quite honestly. I have no idea. We're going to post this stuff on the internet and create an auction, and we're going to see how much money we can make off of it, basically, and see what our profit margin is. So, so far I've got $20 in uh, these three items. Let's see what we can do. So the key to a good auction are quality pictures. You need to have good light uh, to be able to pick up the detail in these items so people can see what they're buying. This is extremely important. If people can't see what they're buying, you're almost definitely going to end uh, with poor results and that could cause you to lose money of course. So within the first couple hours here we got a lot of significant views that led to a, a small number of watchers and some bids that already won our money back. Our invested money was only twenty dollars so uh, here on the, on the third day the M1905's gaining and the Camillus is gaining. Uh, the scavard kind of sat there with two bids for the longest time, but uh, again, I didn't know what it was, so I, I wasn't able to advertise it properly. But I was really impressed as to how fast the bayonets rose in price. It looks like the 1905's pretty much topped out at that number. Uh, but the uh, Camillus has a lot, a lot farther to go, I would hope. And here in the last minutes, yep, 1905 is at 56. And looks like the Camillus tops out at 103.05, which is incredible, considering our investment. And then 1905 ends at 56. And the scabbard gets another 50 cents in the last minute. So this was supposed to be my Veterans Day episode, but I missed it because I had just way too much to do. So here it is. Happy post-Veterans Day, everyone. And thank you for your service.